Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television. This is the Taiwan Outlook, and I'm your host, Wu Ruiguo. There's been a lot of changes and progress in U.S.-China and cross-strait relations since 2008. On today's program, we're delighted and honored to have a leading expert on U.S.-China relations and cross-strait relations in Taiwan to be our special guest. He's a professor of political science and also the vice president at the National Taiwan University, Professor Bao Zhonghe. Professor Bao, welcome to the Taiwan Outlook. Hi, Dr. Wu. It's very, um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, see all of the audience. And uh, uh, it's my honor to yeah. be here. It's our pleasure to have you here. Thank yeah. you. Professor Bao, I'm going to start off with something very broad and general. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand that you're a leading expert on international relations in Taiwan. And uh, the election of President Barack Obama in the United States last year you know, certainly being, you know, uh, coming the beginning of a new era in U.S. and China relations. And some people, and many people actually, uh, regard this relationship as the single most important bilateral relations today in the world. How do you think, under President Obama, that U.S.-China relations will evolve would there be any major changes, or would there be more uh, integration and more interdependence between these two very important nations today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it probably is more interdependency. Okay. Um, because I think uh, uh, this uh, China and the United States are mm -hmm. great power. They have um, uh, many uh, common uh, interests. Mm -hmm. And uh, Obama, I think, uh, if we take a look at his uh, policy and his uh, style and the personality, mm -hmm. um, I think he should be a, a, a very soft in dealing with uh, uh, other great powers, basically. Okay. And um, uh, so I don't think there will be uh, any uh, major change, okay. particularly the, if we take a the, 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 uh, look at the past few years, mm -hmm. I think uh, United States, I think maybe long term, uh, it's a, a policy uh, towards China is uh, how to, um, you know, uh, invite the China's uh, uh, entering into international uh, community and uh, play uh, 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 creative roles mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, uh, international society. So I think this kind of policy uh, won't be any change. Okay. So I, um, I expect that there's a very good and a smooth relation between these two great powers. Okay. But we also understand that, you know, uh, of course, President Obama is very different from President George Bush. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly the style, like you mentioned, and also his policy priorities are very different. So we do see the continuity, of course, you know, driven by the you know, so-called American national interest. But also we can see there could be potentially some problems, some frictions particularly in the area of economic affairs. Mm -hmm. So do you see that there are emergence of some major problems between U.S. and China uh, today and also in the future? I think uh, um, uh, uh, the United States and the China are facing up the same problem, the financial mm -hmm. problem. Yes. So they have to work together to mm -hmm. uh, uh, find a solution to the financial crisis. Exactly. Um, but uh, the, this is a kind of uh, uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I think there's also some kind of uh, competition. Yes. It means that uh, for Beijing's position, uh, I think uh, the leaders of Beijing try to uh, uh, downplay the values of the uh, U.S. dollar. Mm, so uh, okay. uh, in that sense, I think they want to take this chance uh, to play a more important role in the future for mm -hmm. China. Of course. So that's kind of a potential competition between these two powers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also understand that uh, President Obama is still in the process of assembling his national security team. You know, we've already know the names like Secretary of State, of course, uh, former First Lady, Mrs. Clinton, and also you know, Robert Gates as Secretary of Defense is staying mm -hmm. on after the uh, uh, George Bush term is ended. And also uh, we see the you know, deputy level at both the Department of State and also Department of Defense, you know, being merged. But also at the same time, we see that uh, because, as you mentioned, Professor Bao, there is increased economic interdependence between the two countries. So people, some people suspect that maybe in the future, because United States needs China on stabilizing the global financial situation, 
and also because China today is the largest shareholder mm -hmm. of the United, you know, U.S. national you know, bonds. Mm -hmm. And uh, given all these reasons, that the United States may look the other way when it comes to issues like human rights and freedom and concentrate more on the common economic interest between the two nations. Do you agree with such an assessment? Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, because I think uh, um, uh, realism always prevails in uh, interna international relations. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, uh, I think for the United States, I think pragmatism, uh, realism, yes. still the dominant ideologies for mm -hmm. the uh, countries in dealing with uh, other uh, great powers. Mm -hmm. So uh, like a, a financial problem, economic issue, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of uh, uh, belong to the realism, you know, that's a kind of uh, concur with the national interest. Precisely. That's a freedom and the human rights. I think that's, uh, that's also important because that's the value of the United States. But that's kind of uh, idealism, mm -hmm. not realism. Okay. So if the, both sides are you know, uh, uh, put on uh, uh, in the agenda. I think the priority, the first priority, should be uh, you know the realistic issue. Mm -hmm. So I would like to expect that uh, uh, Washington D.C. will choose uh, the, the more pragmatic issue as the first priority in dealing with uh, uh, Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, freedom and the human rights uh, may be put aside for a while until mm -hmm. you know uh, more pragmatic issues can be resolved. Okay, but in addition, you know, to the economic frictions that could happen between the two countries. Another area is on the issue of security and also military presence. We understand the United States is, of course, you know, the most powerful military country in the world. It has military presence all over the world. Mm -hmm. And China, as an emerging you know, uh, international power, uh, certainly is you know, flexing its military muscle at different parts of the world. And recently, we've seen a number of incidents you know, that involving the two militaries uh, in the seas around the Philippines, you know, between the submarine and the, you know, the, 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 uh, the China, I mean, uh, the U.S. You know, battleships. So under the circumstances, do you believe that in the security area, in the military area, that despite that there has been efforts on both sides to try to establish a military-to-military -military dialogue, to you know, enhance the exchanges and also try to promote understanding. Do you believe that the security issue will still remain a very sensitive area in this very delicate relationship between Washington and Beijing? Yeah, I think so, uh, because the uh, security issue is always um, the concern of these uh, two uh, great powers. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, I think not only for these two uh, countries, but for many other uh, great powers, mm -hmm. I think security is always the concern, mm -hmm. uh, not only for themselves, but maybe for other uh, regions and uh, other countries. So I think that's uh, still a common concern, particularly, uh, for example, the North Korea issue, you know, yes. it's, uh, the, that's a quite pretty uh, uh, sensitive uh, and um, uh, predictable. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, something like that, e even in the Middle East, uh, maybe China uh, does not play a very important role, but mm -hmm. uh, for the United States, that's, it's a global power. Yes. So including Asia, you know, uh, it's <laughs> always the concern. Yes. Yes. So I, I agree with that. Um, but uh, something maybe we, we can feel a little bit more comfortable if we take a look at the uh, uh, confrontation between these two powers, the uh, cross-trade relationship, yes. the Taiwan issue. Yes. Uh, I think now it's uh, more stable. So this kind of issue not be so controversial at this moment. Okay, yeah. good. Well, I'm going to ask Professor Bao to hold that thought because uh, we're going to talk about cross-trade you know, mm -hmm. relations yeah. a little later. Now I'm going to get back to the notion that was first coined by the... Uh, uh, former Deputy U.S. Secretary of State Bob Zelik, mm. you know, back in 2005, when he said that United States does expect that in the you know, coming years that China could one day become a responsible stakeholder. Do you think such a notion, you know, I mean, now it's four years later, you know, since the term was first, you know, uh, made public. Do you think that four years later we're looking back on this concept of a responsible stakeholder? Uh, do you think most of the things that China has done, you know, economically, politically, uh, militarily, uh, on the international stage, really has helped itself and qualify itself to become a so-called responsible stakeholder? Yeah, um, I think the, um, the past few years, the mm -hmm. Beijing uh, government uh, tried its, uh, its best uh, mm -hmm. to play such kind of a role. Yes, uh, because. Um, uh, you know, let's concur with, uh, consistent with uh, the national interest of China. 
Mm. And this was very important. Yes. You know, if we take a look at the uh, Mao Zedong, you know, yes. uh, periods, uh, it's a kind of uh, ideological. It's very strong. Very much. So uh, not not so uh, consistent with national interest. No. But uh, for Mao, you know, he chose the ideology as the first uh, choice. Yes. Uh, but the later on, the you know, after Deng Xiaoping, you know, the the situation is changing. And I think the policy of uh, China in dealing with other countries uh, is changing. Yes. So I think uh, um, uh, uh, stakeholders, the uh, responsible stakeholders, I think these kind of roles really uh, 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 consistent with uh, national interest. So it means yes. that the, if we take a, choose that as a so-called, for example, the ideology, yes. this ideology is concur with the national interest. The idealism and the uh, realism, in this sense, concur with each other. They match. So, yeah, match each other. So mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Beijing will continue to choose uh, a soft policy in dealing with other countries as okay. a main uh, policy. Okay. For the remainder amount of time that we have in this segment, Professor Bao, do you see any area that there are bound to be inevitable conflict between the U.S. and China in the coming years? Basically, I don't think so. No. Uh, you mean inevitable? Inevitable. Yeah. Mm. There's some potential confrontation and the yes. conflict. Uh, yes. That's true. For example, the uh, 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 North e Korea issue exactly. and uh, something like that. Uh, but uh, inevitable means that uh, it's a. Uh, must happen. Yes. You know? but, but I think even for North Korea issue, I think it still uh, depends. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, even the, uh, the leaders of North Korea is, uh, choose a very hard uh, uh, policy lines in dealing with other countries. Yes. This may be based on the domestic uh, uh, problems. Yes. So uh, it still, you know, depends. Uh, for Taiwan issue, you know, I just it's mentioned no it's concern. okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I think n nothing is inevitable to be okay. to happen. Yeah. Well, that's very you know, <laughs> pleased to know. And we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to the Taiwan outlook, and we'll continue this conversation with Professor Bao, and we're going to talk about cross relations. We'll be back in three minutes.